Hey, good evening. Bill Davis here from Charter Markets. It is currently 11.06 p.m. And I wanted to run through a couple charts. Just let me find my pen and paper here. So I don't know if if anyone has caught the videos this week and the videos are posted on YouTube, uh, Twitter, and Facebook. But we have talked about, or I should say I have talked about, uh, these upward probabilities that were going to be taking place in the market. You know, I, w I was saying I felt very good about my data models and how certain levels would potentially produce uh, outcomes where certain levels uh, could be closed at or above. If you don't understand what I'm saying, I, I encourage you to go back and look at the videos from er earlier this week. Um, when the videos are displaying, you know, be sure to look at the chart you know, during the video, but then also see how the chart uh, has progressed from that initial video. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, anything I say about a stock is 100% accurate or, you know, or the stock is going to do whatever I say the stock is going to do. You have to leave some room for, um, price movement and price behavior. But anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. Let's go to... Which one's this pointing at? Okay, so let's go to the NASDAQ 100. So, I'm going to pull some things up here. Now, if you recall from the videos, I was talking about anything at this level, anything below it or close to it, the 11,415.25 would be a buying opportunity for me. And we were talking about that. Um, what day is this? On Wednesday. You know, go back and look at the videos where we put this this shadow in here. And we said anything that comes below this area or near it will be buying opportunities for the NASDAQ 100 futures to close above 11,415.25. Uh, currently it is at 11,796.25. We looked at Tesla. There's quite a few videos on Tesla. Now this one here, you know, we were saying anything below 178.57 at or near it would be buying opportunities. Now this is based off our, our um, off my data model, and we also closed a gap, which is which is good. But uh, some people might look at this and say, why are you in this stock? There's no signal. But, you know, some of these triggers that get initiated come from my data models when there's certain criteria that's taking place. So that's why Tesla has been on uh, the active list for buying below these levels. The anticipation is for tomorrow, being Friday, uh, December 9th, the expectation based on the data model has a 75 to 95% uh, probability of success outcomes within the models. Now, granted, every stock is not going to perform the same way, 
you might have a stock um, where my analysis shows 87% of the time the data model is, is a, a uh, success, a W. And then you might have a different stock where it says this one's about 75%. But anyhow, you know, Tesla closed the gap. They closed at uh, 173.44. <clears throat> and I expect this to close tomorrow being Friday at 178.57 or higher. I'd give it, uh, I'd give it a little bit of wiggle room around that level. Let's see, Apple. Oh, I also want to point, well, just, never mind. Pull Apple up. End the videos yesterday. I had posted a couple of items on Apple on all my social media accounts. That anything below this 141.35 would be an, a buying opportunity for me. It hit a low yesterday of 140, which almost, almost got to our BM2 level. But if I were to take this and cut it in half, this would have breached my micro level of 140.21. And then I could have took anything that broke above this uh, let's say 141 area and then had some some levels here so apple looks good you know for me um i would expect apple to stay above the 141.35 for a close and let's see I wouldn't be surprised if Apple retested the 145 up to, let's see, that would be a pretty big move. Let's see if this is, makes sense. We're just going to put some micros in here. Let's say first target is 144.70. Second target would be 146-ish. So 146, 147. I'd really like to get a movement that breaches back up above this 148. You know, anything above this area, 148, 149. Let's look at the spy. Type in the store. Spy, we need to be ab above the 392. And this is another chart where earlier this week we were identifying you know this this gray area that anything within this vicinity the 132 i mean the one uh sorry the 392 43 and 392 anything below that or a touch we'd be looking at uh scaling in for buying opportunities and today we had a really nice move off those levels up uh, $3.08. So I'd like to see this get back up to what is 400 area on SPY.
Let's see some other ones I want to look at. Let's look at Meta. And Meta, I have flagged. So Meta right now broke below our 115.54, so it's got these, it's got the, uh, I'd probably break this in half. So for Meta, and it's probably going to get a rise tomorrow, but let's just call it at the top and the bottom. And if we get a rise tomorrow, look at 117.80 up to potentially 120. If we keep an eye on that 50 day moving average at 118, uh, we currently close at 115.33. So we would be a little bit below this 115.55. And if we were to break down, we'd be looking at 113.70. And let's call this one 111.90. Let's go ahead and put the level in on where we would anticipate this to close at or above. That's 115.61 which we know it's currently below it. So there you go. So if we would have been looking at this stock yesterday, which I glanced at it, but I didn't have my data models up, we could have identified yesterday and the day before that this had a high probability of closing back uh, or closing above this particular area. So a little bit of a missed opportunity there. I'm trying to get, think of some other stocks to look at. Um, I did hear some news about Microsoft, but it's just noise, so I didn't really pay much attention to it. Uh, we can look and see if anything happened in the after hours. But it's just... It's just noise. Really nothing to report on. Let's see where these levels are. And it looks like it's above levels. Yeah, it's it's nicely above it, so let's see where that level <coughs> where that level is or was and how price you know when we we see that we had an alert for it but we were too busy um, with other things and you can see yesterday provided an opportunity for that So yesterday we breached below and our 75 to 95 percent probability would it would be for Microsoft to close above 245 by the end of the week which is tomorrow let's see oh the SPX is one that we've been posting on. We posted on it this morning as well. Same thing with F, um, SPX. You'll see in, in the recent videos this week and posts on social media that we were identifying this box down here. So anything below, um, I'll just type it in over here. I can pull the figures up. 
anything below 392.02. Oh, actually, that's the wrong one. SPX. So anything below 3,956.97. And it looks like we, we ran at this to 39.56. And as you can see, currently it's at 39.63. So that also would have been a victory. So the only one right now that's not performing uh, where we would expect it is Tesla. But Tesla still has till close of the week for that 75 to 95% probability uh, to be a W. So we'll see how the markets are running. This is a really good sign. Um, you know, we called at this NQ the, the other night throughout the week, actually. We we're saying that these would be buying opportunities in here if this was us buying. And we say this is us because we're not, uh, I'm not a financial advisor or a broker. So everything's for educational purposes. But this whole trifecta right here, anything below 11,415, and then you had your levels here, you could choose. 11,478 and the 11,435 so that whole trifecta area and you can see where price is now all right so that's all i have uh we looked at um some futures like the Tesla, Apple, SPY, Meta, and the SPX. So um, we'll see how these levels continue to perform throughout the week. Leave any comments on the videos or social media posts. Uh, if you want to see any levels or any, any uh, data model points, uh, let me know in the comments. Let's see about uh, looking those over, maybe monitor them for the week. And uh, we'll get ready for the important PPI news coming out tomorrow. And then next week, we'll be looking at CPI and inflation numbers. So, all right. Have a good night.